Okay, now we'll go back to the popping idea. One of the things we wanted to do, and this is interactive, and I call it popcorn, it's, which means we don't, we just hit popcorn, whoever wants to, to raise their hand. We're gonna pass around the mic again. A lot of different things have been discussed today. Certain things hit you differently than they hit other people. We'd like you to say, what's your one or two takeaways? You know, what do you, when you go back to your desk, hopefully not till Friday or Thursday afternoon, what are you going to do? What action are you gonna take about what you heard here? And so I'm gonna snag this, uh, this one and we're gonna pass it and we're gonna do a hand pass around instead of people getting up. And we may, um, we may still end up ending early. We do have a reception tonight too though. We have the booze. No, excuse me, I didn't say that. <laughs> we have, uh, I'm not sure about the reception. Oh, they count. Oh, they count. So the thing that I'm really excited about, and this is a little bit related to today, but that anti-racism training was just like so phenomenal. Um, yeah, and uh, I have been wanting to pull the trigger on uh, kind of training our staff at Friends of the Urban Forest because it's something that we're working in an urban environment and especially trying to increase canopy um, in predominantly uh, black neighborhoods, black and Latino neighborhoods in San Francisco. Um, I think it's just super important and I'm really to, ready to go back and talk to my executive director and program director about uh, doing that um, racism, anti-racism training and making it happen, so. I wanted to mirror what Allegra was saying. Um, in, I think, a week, maybe a week and a half, I'm gonna be onboarding, um, I think, three or four staff members at our city forest, and so the anti-racism training came at a really great time for us as we retool our own staff policies and procedures and looking at how we do advocacy and outreach in some neighborhoods, particularly the, the DAC tracks that we've been talking about today. So it's an excellent time. I'm excited to use these takeaways and improve our programs. Um, I'm with Lauren in that note. Um, we're gonna strategize and really improve our training, not only on the staff level, but also for our AmeriCorps service members who do go out into the community and hopefully you try to build capacity within the communities that we're trying to reach out to. Um, I also want to take away the importance of volunteers and really try to bring new strategies um, and fresh strategies to hopefully get a better retention rate as well and hopefully volunteers of all types of backgrounds, all types of walks of life that are, um, and get them interested in the urban forest and yeah, so it's been great. Which way should I go? I, I, given that I'm new to all of this, it's been like drinking from a fire hose. Um, I don't, you know, I've got so many ideas that I want to go back and discuss with my, uh, my colleagues. Um, but I hate to sort of, you know, reprise the same theme over and over again. But the, the racism discussion was very interesting to me because it's something I've thought a lot about personally. And given our, our work in Skid Row, it's always in the background. And we're always trying to recruit people from the community, whatever they're ethnic or racial background, and we have trouble doing it. You know, it, it's just, it's very difficult to connect with people who have all sorts of, you know, social issues. Um, and um, Catherine is, has done a pretty good job, one of our co-founders, um, at, at recruiting homeless people to, to conduct monthly tree care walks. And it's, it's been quite a successful program. It's been up and running for about two years. But we really want to sort of broaden our engagement of, of, the, of the community in Skid Row especially. And um, um, I forgot the gentleman's name who was, who was giving. Leo. Leo. He, he raised some points that you know, really sort of got me thinking. But in terms of how we might act on that, it's just too early to say. I need some time to you know, digest it and think it through. Who's next? Uh, I'm, I'm from Roseville up near Sacramento and we're just getting going again uh, with a new contract with our city. Um, but I think uh, connecting to uh, some of the discussions today, 
I'm looking for more, and I've talked to a couple people today, more tasks for people to get engaged with the urban forest. Um, there's plantings, there's mulching, but there's all kinds of other things I've learned today. You know, there's the tree walks, there's surveys, there's, um, and the, the more variety of things I think that we can find for people to do to interact with trees, the more we can engage different kinds of people into that. So um, I'm just looking for, you know, this huge umbrella of, we, you can do this, you can do that, you can do this, you can do that. And so where, what fits you? So that's been real exciting. They all want to go? All right. I think executive privilege. Marjorie. Oh boy, thanks Cindy, put me on the spot. Um, going back to the racial justice conversation, uh, some, for some reason the intent versus impact really got me, uh, that part of the conversation. I don't know, I, I'm, not I'm gonna have to, to stew on that a little bit. I'm not really sure what impact that is gonna have on my work. Uh, but I know that it will have an impact in my work as well as my personal life, just how I go about seeing the world and interacting with other people. Um, not really sure what to say about that, but I know that it's going to change the way that I look at things moving forward, definitely. Yeah, I'll just follow up with that. When, when I heard Leo say that the first time, the intent versus the impact, and that we, we couldn't sort of like take, uh, excuse ourselves for being liberal environmentalist by saying, well, that's not what I intended. I mean, to be honest, I mean, I, I talk a fair amount and it, it made me a little afraid to open my mouth because then I started thinking, well, what's gonna come out that I'm not thinking clearly enough about that is unknowingly racist? Um, so, this is not easy. This is, it's gonna take thought. It's not easy. I keep saying you have to be, Comfortable being uncomfortable with this, so. Uh, I think one of the main takeaways from today is uh, friendship and allies um, in multiple ways, um, both from volunteer and community integration and community support, um, and also within the network around here. Uh, definitely a follow up, uh, being new to the urban forestry, um, had a conversation earlier about no need to recreate the wheel. There's already so much going on um, and not to stay isolated um, in so many ways in what we're doing and kind of immerse yourself um, in what else is going on. Brian, Brian's shy. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, I think today uh, I really enjoyed listening to Friends of the Urban Forest and hear about all the variety of volunteer programs that you're all working on. Um, I thought they were pretty neat. And um, I think with the racism discussion and all that, for me it really just emphasizes um, even more so the importance of uh, you know, working with the local, local-based organization. We're a local community-based organization, but within the communities we serve, there are even more locally based organizations within that that are even more in tune with that neighborhood, that two, three, four, five blocks that they live on, um, and that those are the groups that really help drive the work that we do and listening to them and the needs that they have in that, you know, really micro, small, close up level is um, the thing that is what makes our work work. Um. I, I don't know if this is really a profound takeaway, but the thing that I cannot stop thinking about is that the president of the board of directors for the Tree Musketeers is 16 years old, right? Like, uh, I, I think, I just, can't, I just can't even fathom how interesting those board meetings must be. Um, but, but one of the things that I found so impressive about that presentation was that you took this Girl Scout troop core mission and it exists intact decades later. Uh, like that, that isn't done very frequently 
And to have that much respect for a generation of people that will be the beneficiaries of the work you're doing when you plant trees, but not just have a respect for that, but have them take responsibility and initiative within your organization at a leadership level, um, I thought was like astounding. And I, I really wish that uh, there, were, there were more models like that or more examples of, of people that put trust in nine-year-olds and 10-year-olds and 15-year-olds um, because I think part of the difficulty of this work is that oftentimes, you know, by the time that tree reaches maturity and is doing the work that we all talk about, um, you know, those, those folks will, will already be adults um, well into their years. So uh, I thought that was really amazing, and I, I can't stop thinking about it. Um, I felt that the anti-racism training was great. It was really important. I have a million takeaways from it, but um, from the very productive conversations I've had with my colleagues even after when we took the break, I feel like one thing that really resonates for me is how you know, daunting it can feel to dismantle racism and white supremacy and to figure out ways to do it within systems and your own organization and whatever, but at the end of the day, the, the most important place to start is with your own sense of personal responsibility and that that very much manifests itself in the conversations you have with your coworkers and the conversations you have with volunteers, with your partners, the way you think before you open your mouth. Uh, you know, all of these different ways that we can kind of challenge ideas and, and kind of manifest better impacts as well as intentions. Um, so that, that training was very useful to me in that way. I've been working with uh, California Relief now for 20 years, and this is the first year that I've been able to bring along one of the students that we work with a lot. This is uh, Cheryl here. She's 19. She's the president of Your Children's Trees at UCSB, so we are also, uh, in our own way, have a somewhat of a student model uh, uh, as like. And what we do, um, uh, the name of our organization is Your Children's Trees, and we use that in a tagline um, at every event. Uh, we tell people, thank you very much for planting the trees, thank you for being stewards, uh, but they're not your trees. They're your children's trees, and your children's children's trees, and we're just here to watch over them. And fortunately, we now have the next generation, I hope, uh, to help watch over them as well. So I've spent a considerable part of the day working back here in the back, but I have to tell you, everything that I've heard and what I'm hearing now as your takeaways, I'm so frickin' proud to be standing in this room right now. It is just filled with enlightenment and smarts and stuff you can take back. And I've been on the relief board for a few years. I'm not Melissa's mother, but I do love her in that way. Um, but. It's just uh, to see, I've seen it take all kinds of different iterations, and this has just been fantastic. Hearing you guys, it's, it makes it just a toda dar. Thank you very much. It's awesome. It's been awesome. You don't have to have a takeaway. Don't worry, Leo. I'll give you another shout out. You're, you'll be fine. Um, so first, uh, being in the same room with members of organizations from all over the state has been great. It's been inspiring and kind of rejuvenating and I'm looking forward to another day and a half. We're just getting going here. Um, and then, of course, like many of you, I really enjoyed Leo's talk. Um, really excited to have him as a consultant on one of my projects now and then. Um, in addition to what he talked about today, he's also a incredible fruit tree expert, and I've already learned a lot, so that's great. Um, I've been working in disadvantaged communities in Sacramento for about six months now, and I think I'm doing some things well, but I know I can be doing a lot better. Um, so I've already started thinking about, after our great discussion today, 
what are some of the practical things, making that transition to what I'm going to be doing when I get back to Sacramento. And I'm already thinking about how I'm going to build trust and this idea of reciprocity. And all of these things kind of came to me as we were having that racial justice talk earlier. So still thinking, still percolating, but I can already see that some great practical um, you know, protocol type things will be able to come out of that. So looking forward to that. Anybody else? <laughs> I just want to thank Doug for iterating and then reiterating the importance of food and beer in good volunteer management. And we're getting close to that, eh? <laughs> so, okay. Is there anybody else that would like to share anything or bring something up? Up, ah, Lori. If we could dance it this way. That's right. Walk this way. Hi, I'm from Tree San Diego, and it, it was it's it. just a thought that was triggered. We're a relatively new uh, organization, and so we're always looking for sources of financial support. Uh, and there was a question a asked earlier about Native Americans, and I remember last year someone spoke uh, a little bit on that topic and um, making the point that um, that environment is part of their many of the tribal cultures, respect for nature, et cetera, living with nature. Um, and so it occurred to me, both in my backyard but also in a lot of your backyards and maybe at the state level, they're a community that could be engaged. They are, uh, the tribes are fragmented, I mean, it's not like one big Apache tribe, but um, nevertheless, um, they share some things and I'm sure have quite a few communication networks among them. I have observed when they get energized in our local area about an issue, they really know how to advocate. I mean, make their voices heard, so, and also, some of the um, tribes have a lot of money. Some of them are very poor. Uh, exactly, because of the casinos. So, um, couple, putting all that together, I really don't, I can use advice if anyone's had, uh, you know, any success. FNX.org. Oh, really? Interesting. Could you repeat so, that? What did, what did you okay. say? FM. FNX is the name of the program. Channel. Okay. 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 So it just occurred to me that in terms of both resources and support advocacy for the mission, that bringing in you know, Native Americans into our community could have multiple benefits. And, and yet, I'm, I have no examples of that if anyone does uh, additional information. I would take it, but I'm really also thinking at the state level, you know, statewide, and um, right. networking us uh, on that subject might provide some. Just out of curiosity, outcomes. does anyone work with Native tribes right now? No one. I may say, everybody here, there is a channel on public, public television which is called First Nations Experience, FNX. And if you Google it, you'll find it. And there is a lot of organizations that are represented in programs and about gardening and, and medicine and everything. But, I mean, to this question, there is a lot of Native American population in, the, in California, in particular Southern California, in, in LA area, in Inland Empire, so, and actually that's, I didn't say that, but uh, Lori said that, that they, they know how to do things, and they care, that's in their culture. Like, okay. we need to learn right. from them how to care for nature, so that, that would be a, a great addition or a resource. Cool. I know that when, when I was at Sacramento Tree Foundation, we had conversations with one of the tribes, and we talked about air quality, and that was a big concern because um, they were near a highway. Um, but you know how we talked about persistence uh, with fundraising, I think was what Lupe talked about, persistence? 
it was one of those relationships with that we needed more persistence to pursue. So I guess that's also a question of investment of time. So, but I, I agree that it would be a natural fit. So.